Welcome to Tecmo Tuesday, and welcome to the finale, the great, the, the, the big game, the Super Bowl. It's the Patriots and the Seahawks in this 2017 uh, Brown season that I tried to bring a winless team to the playoffs. It didn't work. I didn't even, I didn't even get them to the playoffs, never mind the Super Bowl. So, you know, it's going to be Patriots and Seahawks. I'll be sending the game, and I'll be watching it, and that's, you know, that's that. And, uh, like usual, I'll be taking a, a little bit of a break as, like, you know, an off-season of sorts. And it's going to be the same for the other weekday shows, so Mega Man Maker Monday and Thir Throwback Thursday. I, I don't hate to sound redundant, but... I know that not all these weekday shows aren't for everybody. So, you know, like the people that watch on Tecmo Tuesday don't necessarily watch the Mega Man Mondays or the Throwback Thursdays. Or, you know, on the, the, the part-time shows, the, the Wednesday and Third Friday shows. All of those are going to... I'm going to be on break along with the Tecmo Tuesday. And when I come back with Tecmo Tuesday, I'll also be coming back with all the other ones. So, you know, it, after a few months of saying, okay, I've had enough of a break... I'll come back with all the shows at, uh, at once and do a steady stream of, like, you know, 20 episodes. 20 if it's a 16-game season because it's all going to be in concurrence with Tecmo Tuesday. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but as far as this game goes, I am pulling for the Seahawks. I, the, I'm looking at this as, like, a an alternate universe where the Seahawks got a chance to get revenge on the Patriots. And also, if this were in this alternate universe, I would be butthurt over the Raiders losing in the AFC Championship game to the Patriots. It's also probably what would have happened. You know, it's like it just because the NFL, I've said it before, I've said it on here, aside from real life, I've said it uh, on, on Tecmo Tuesday before to the world, that the NFL is a practical joke against me. It, it does everything it can. And I know a lot of, you know, Browns fans and Lions fans, Lions fans up until recently, um, will say, you know, fuck you. You know, it's been pretty rough for us, too. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh... Not only am I a Raiders fan that has dealt with losing on a very consistent basis over the last two decades, um... I also live in New England, so I have to deal with Patriot fans, especially Patriot, especially millennial Patriot fans who have basically only watched successful Patriot runs. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and it's funny because after like a few years, like a handful, a couple of years of mediocre or worse football for the Patriots. The mentality of, oh my god, it's so horrible, you know. What, we've been losing for a whole three years here. Good god, it's the worst. Yeah, you know, fuck you. It, if, if the Patriots never make it back to the playoffs again, it'll be too soon. That's a nice catch by Graham over the middle. Graham's going to get that one, too. He's going to drag the defender down to the two, maybe the one. They're counting as the one. It's more like the one and a half. And it's a pick in the end zone. Are you kidding me? The Seahawks throw an interception to the Patriots in the, from the one-yard line in the Super Bowl. You can't make this shit up. Oh, my God. If this would, it, 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 Could you imagine if this were real life and they did that? What the reaction? I know it was only the beginning of the second quarter and it's no score, but the fact that it even happened. And you know what's fucked up is I was thinking it too, like before the snap even happened, I was like, I didn't want to jinx it. But I think even by thinking it, I jinxed it. You know, who am I kidding? It, I didn't need to jinx it. It was, it's, it's written in the annals of time. It's, it's, it's what happens 
when you play against the Patriots. You completely crap your pants. You outsmart yourself. You, you know, it's you, every fucking team that played against them back then does this shit. And it's happening right now with the Chiefs. Everybody gets in their own fucking head and they piss down their leg. It's amazing the the brain fartage that happens. I know it's really tough to in the situation to uh okay, look at that. See like that would have been I know it's fourth down, they didn't get the they didn't convert. But that would have been an interception if it was uh if it was the Seahawks with the ball. But the Patriots do cash in with a field goal, and that is a 10-point swing right there from what should have been a touchdown drive for the Seahawks. And they fumble it right back to them, and they're going to get it to the 6. So, wow, just like that. It was going to be 7-0 Seahawks to start the second quarter. And a couple possessions later, now it's 10 nothing. Like, about six plays later. More than that. I think the, the Patriots had a, long, had a lengthy drive there. We're already, like, halfway into the second here. Wow. This would lead to, um... Assuming the Seahawks go and lose this game... You know, I'm just thinking, like, what would happen? Pete Carroll, I don't think he would get fired. I think they would, uh, I, th I, th I think that Seahawks owner would say off with his head. I think they would put his head on a fucking pike outside of the fucking stadium. It's, uh, absolutely mind-numbing to think that. I mean, no, it's, I know it's Tecmo, it's the Tecmoverse, it's not... But maybe it's even smarter than we give it credit for. Although I, you know, after those fourth downs that some of these fucking teams have done in the playoffs, not the not fourth downs, the onside kicks in overtime. What the fuck is that? But at the same time, for every time there's a monumental fuck up like that, there is what seems like divine intervention in the Patriots getting an interception from the one-yard line in the Super Bowl against Seattle. It's, it's like it's written in the pages, and there's another pick. Russell Wilson is having a terrible day. They fumbled it and kept it anyway. It's And they are going to get more yardage as a result of it. They might even get a fucking touchdown. No, they but it's going to be first and goal for the Pats from the seven, and they have some time here to, 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 to get it in the end zone. But they probably should kick the field goal here. Yeah. So, it, unless there's a block here, it should be 13 nothing Pats here to go in, into halftime. That could have been a lot worse because, holy shit, I thought they were going to get a touchdown on that interception return. Still plenty of time, and it's really not an insurmountable lead here. You know, a uh, just don't fumble it. Just run out of bounds. Fuck it. That's what you should be doing right about now. So we'll get the Mighty Bomb Jack show, I hope. Look at this. Russell Wilson is outthrowing Brady by almost 100 yards. Brady does not need to complete much yards. In fact, they're not running the ball very much either. They are just getting turnovers. They're getting a good, really good field position. That's been the result of most of the points. But all it takes is one touchdown, and it's a one-possession game again. They've at least held them the field goals. Not a very complicated dance choreography routine for the Mighty Bomb Jacks, but, you know, the halftime shows weren't as extravagant back then. Although, if he got people flying, literally, across the fucking sky, and then three of them get together and merge, that's pretty fucking extravagant. That is, uh, I don't think this is parlor tricks here. They're definitely not being held up by bungee cords or anything, so, I, uh, you know, I take it back. That's a pretty... Epic fucking halftime show. I would rather see that than a lot of the halftime shows that we've seen. And by we, I mean the general people. I generally, I usually don't watch them.
My favorite one was, uh, I think it was Super Bowl 42. Because it was Tom Petty, and Tom Petty is, you know, the man to me. He was, got me into music. Um, he not only played uh, the halftime show, but that was the Super Bowl that the Patriots lost, and well, their undefeated season went uh, tits up. So that was a great day. And um, it was also 2017 season that we're, you know, going through here was the year, it was during that season that he passed away. Meanwhile, the Patriots scored again, and, you know, it's really, it's, never mind what I said before about how, you know, a touchdown can change the course of things. I mean, it's still, they still could come back. But, I mean, it's 20 to nothing. It, you gotta go back to that interception in the end zone. It, obviously, it wasn't the reason why they lost, Oh, you know, I'm saying it like they already lost the game here. They, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. But it's not looking good for the Seahawks. And really, it was ever since that play where it's really been bad for the Seahawks. Ugh. I'm also curious. I didn't look to see who got the interception, too. If it was Malcolm Butler. <laughs> if it was Malcolm Butler. Um, then holy shit. Like, that would just... I end... That would be that would be even funnier because he didn't even play in that Super Bowl in 2017. That was one of the big controversial moves was Belichick benching him, and there didn't seem to be any reason why. And not just bench him, but not put him in once they were getting carved up. At least the Seahawks are going for this here. And he's overthrown. Wow, you just cannot. Uh, yeah, they, they cannot get out of their own way. He was wide open, and Wilson just overshot it. So, you know, in, it's, in, in football, a lot of times, it's about who doesn't make the mistakes. And the Patriots are playing mistake-free football like they do in real life, or they did. You know, like this, in, during this era. And, uh, you know, Hogan's going to have to go back to the... Uh, to the sideline here, but it's looking like it doesn't matter. <laughs> the one thing that, you know, we'll see if there's a, you know, a shutout here. Uh, that has not happened in the Super Bowl. Yeah, don't like Ronk score, please. Not that, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's He's got one anyway, I think. I haven't really been paying too much attention to the... All of the, you know, the box score or any of that shit. I think he's got one. And now White does have one. And 27 to nothing. It's lights out. That's it. Ugh. Yeah, what a snooze fest this game has been. Although, with some highlights, you know, like the uh, there's you know there's been some uh, just you know the, that interception in the end zone was like the big what the fuck. But you know, like there's the, the fumble that the Patriots <laughs> they they got an interception, fumbled it, and recovered it, and took it for enough distance to kick a field goal, which of course isn't the difference of the game. But it's those things, it's those mistakes that have plagued the Seahawks. And not just... But you gotta think, and there's another one. And it's gonna be a touchdown. <laughs> wow. When it rains, it pours, and it rains in Seattle a lot. This game, you know... 
And they got the block uh, PAT, the one saving grace there, the one moment for the Seahawks. They drove it down the field a few times, too. It's not like their offense has been totally anemic. And my god, another one. They did recover it this time, but oh my god, this is... Obviously, that three interception in the end zone in this game was a footnote, but the fact that it even happened again, and that was just a bad throw into double coverage. They're just throwing shit at the wall to see if it sticks. You just gotta score some points and, and, and say salvage whatever dignity you have left. That's all it is. That's all it's left. Well, 33 to nothing with 303 left. It's all threes and zeros. Not to mention it was... Th was it third and three on top of it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Speaking of, you know, I'm just grasping at straws here to have something to talk about. I just like to see them score. Like, for all the reasons I said before. Just so they, you know, they can at least hang their head on that. They already lost, obviously, the Lombardi's going back to New England here. But, if, you know, I, I, if this were real life, I would just feel bad for a team... Um, getting just decimated like this. Unless it were the Cowboys or the Pats. Then I wouldn't feel bad. It's hard to feel bad for multi-millionaires, but... I would, I would feel bad for the fan base, too. But they get the touchdown. They did, like I said, salvage the... What was left of their souls... But this is something that's impossible to recover from. Like, it was... Oh, man, you're gonna give up another one? Even if they score again, it doesn't really matter. But it would be another... Just like a salt in the wound and the dagger through the heart. Oh, look at that. The dive gave Gronk an extra six yards, too. Why are you calling time out here? If you see how, just go home. Don't risk injuries. So yeah, you need, they, you know, they needed to get that touchdown back. This is a game, too, that Belichick would... You would get on the podium and talk about the shit they did wrong. He would say, oh, yeah, we need to work on this and that. Even though the fucking season's over and you won the goddamn Super Bowl. Last play of the game. No, they're gonna get another one, at least. Probably gonna be a fumble return for a touchdown. So that's it. 40 to seven, the Pats just absolutely destroy the Seahawks. And Tom Brady did not even have 100 yards passing. I know that the Tecmo stats are different. You know, uh, like, a, like a 200 yard game in Tecmo is probably the equivalent of a 300 yard game in real life. It's that that's more of like a, a strong game. And Russell Wilson did throw for 248, but he threw two bad picks. I feel like there was more than that. I know there were the fumbles. It was a fucking bakery for the Seahawks. Uh, a lot of turnovers. They, the Pats did run the ball. Well, they got more in the second half than they did in the first half because you're just grinding out the game. You know, it's like, that's it. There's no... You have it won, pretty much. Once they scored that first touchdown at the start of the second half, that was pretty much the beginning of the end. You could say that the, the pick in the end zone was the turning point. That was, even though it wasn't in Seattle's favor or anything, they were still, they were driving. They looked like they were going to get the first points of the game. But that just sucked all of the air out of it. And if this were real life, too, because these kind of mental things are not a presence in Tecmo, even though it seems like it a lot of the time, I, uh, I, it, it doesn't exist.
but they totally would have had a uh, you know just like a complete shutdown much in the way that it played out and it, every, the game probably would have unfolded like this if it were real life so another season down of Tecmo Tuesday we you know I'll be back in a few months for another season I do not know who I'm going to play as I'm still going to I'm going to take the time off to kind of reassess it I don't even have any uh you know like front runners or anything like that I do have some requests that people have left <coughs> excuse me about like you know with some of those because the whole point of it is is to pick a shitty team, uh, you know, one of the worst ones in the teams in the league at a certain point. Sometimes historically bad, like these Browns who were eight and eight. And I did enjoy the challenge that this one presented. Whereas in most of the old, the the first six seasons, I was I felt pretty good about the chances to make the playoffs throughout most of the season. This time it was like a real like down to the wire. In fact, it, the last game was the deciding factor, and we lost. But you know, like I said, I enjoyed the challenge that it presented. So maybe I'll go that route again with like a you know a one of the worst teams of all time kind of deal. But it also, I it also I'm sure it depends on the ROM. I think some of them are more difficult than others. It may have played a factor. I don't know. I I, I don't know if that's even what I'm going to do. But it is a thought. Um, you know, I'm going to think about it throughout this time off. So, that's it. The Patriots won again. And 40-7, to an absolute decimation of their souls is what that was. So, thanks for watching. Um, you know, I'm going to take a break. Even though I will still be here for the Sunday shows. So, you know, the reviews and the walkthroughs and the Atari games and the soundtrack rankings. Those that in, are in that rotation will continue to happen. A lot of this is so that I can focus on those and, you know, catch up and take a breather and do some things outside of YouTube that I like to do. Um... So, yeah, there's a lot of factors. But anyway, that's it for this week. That's it for Techbo Tuesday for a little while. I will be back, though, I promise. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for continuing to watch. Uh, as you have for a little, you know, for everybody that's, whether you just got on board or if you have been watching for a while, thank you for watching. And I'll see you when I get back.